Division 2 action now between uh, Paul Reynolds at the bottom of the screen and Nick Peterson at the top. Uh, you can see the points here. Uh, pretty good season so far for Nick. He's sitting on 24 points. Paul's still in striking distance on 14, but he needs to have a really good uh, next couple of weeks to maintain touch with the top, with the top uh, places. Uh, it looks like this is recorded by Paul, so it looks like he's on this black white aggro kind of knight's deck that's starting to pop up more and more now. He's going to be able to go turn two hard of Quran, so he can. The toolcraft is going to be a three two, but it looks like um, Nick is on gr green blue merfolk, so this this deck can generate tons of card advantage very quickly. I like that attack there, trying to trade with the Toolcraft because Toolcraft isn't going to be able to do anything next turn anyway because the Silver Go Adept will just trade with it. Or well, he's going to try it anyway. I don't believe it has first strike. No, it doesn't. So he's going to take the trade. He can play the Knight of Malice next turn, which will crew the Heart of Quran. And I think in blue-green, uh, Nick's going to have a lot of trouble dealing with the artifact. Now, Deep Root Waters, every time he casts a Merfolk, he gets a 1-1. One, one. It's a cast trigger, it's not a... Um, yeah, a cast trigger, not a enters the battlefield trigger. So, Mer Metallic Mimic's going to name Merfolk, so this is going to be very good with Deep Root Waters here. You can see it going off already. They become 2-2s, two he plays a Kamina Speaker, which straight up is a 3-3 three, three for 1. So this is looking very good. The problem here for Paul is that he needs the white permanent. He can't he can't crew Heart of Quran without um, a 3-powered creature. Knight of Malice is going to be 3-power once he... Um, because he, he has a white permanent through History of Benali and also that Knight. So he can actually crew the Heart of Quran now. But this board state is getting a bit out of control. I don't know if he actually wants to crew it and attack. Well, he just answered my question. He does. I'm suspecting the justification for this is that he has a fatal push in hand. And he's got Lyra Dawnbringer coming down next turn. Uh, again, green-blue has no way to deal with something like a, a resolved 5 power, 5-5 five, five first strike with life, lifelink. So the Dawnbringer would just be game over. And you can see he's going to, I like that play, Fatal Push on the Metallic Mimic, just so that these two creatures don't get an extra counter. It still is a very wide board though. History of Benalia is going to pump the two knights for this turn. He can't find the fifth land. So they're going to become a, a 4 and a 5 power. That 2-2 two -two has, um, has Hexproof. Uh, he, he just plussed it to make... Okay, so he's plus uh, He zeroed Gideon to make him a 4-4 four -four so he can crew the Heart of Quran because he's got summoning sickness. So we've got ourselves an old-fashioned race here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 power on the board though. So he's got to be careful that... That's a chump blocker right there. It's a it's, it's a it's evenly poised at the moment, twelve to nine in terms of life. But you just get the feeling that Paul needs to find that fifth land. I think he's going to lose the race if he can't find it in the next turn or two. Although, just looking at the math now, there's 4, 7, 10, there's 12 power on the board if he can crew the heart of Quran. I like this attack, he's going to have to trade the knight away. Oh no! <laughs> 
Uh, actually, I, I was at GP New Jersey, and I actually I had a match won, but I, I actually ended up drawing the match for the exact same reason. I forgot that you can take a loyalty counter away from a planeswalker to crew heart of Quran. And uh, Nick gets caught out with that there as well. You can see he's going to do it again here to crew the heart of Quran. So this is becoming pretty strong, a pretty strong start here for the uh, Paul, the black white player. Lethal damage coming through here 8, 11, 13 damage. I'm not sure, uh, as he's one short of playing Benelish Marshall as well. But this does not look good, I think that we're about to go to game two. Yeah, Paul concede, uh, Nick concedes, and we're going to go to game two of standard. Well, you can see a lot of Merfolk there, so Authority of the Consoles has come in, but this is a kind of a risky keep, uh, one lander. You can see it's got a very low curving deck. I mean, a second land would help him really go off, but it's, it's risky if he doesn't hit it, and he doesn't hit it immediately. Isolated Chapel comes in tap because there's no plains or swamp but that's a pretty ominous sign right there that he has to play the deep, deep root elite without another merfolk on the board kind of tells me he doesn't have anything And he has three, so three mana up, and he still doesn't have anything. I, I, I'm not really sure what's going on here. Five cards in hand, unless he wants to ambush him in combat. Okay, Essence Scatter is going to prevent him from playing the first one, but he's still going to be able to play out the second because it's only one drop, and it's going to be able to crew the Heart of Quran. Yeah, green, um, green, blue. I'm trying to think what he can draw. Here's the the Lord now, the Mist Binder. Uh, nothing in hand to seal away that might be able to deal with it. But serious power about to come across right here. I think Paul will be in the. Oh, I, th I think he's tapped that wrong. He should have tapped the Knight of Malice to crew the Heart of Quran, and I would have traded the Toolcraft Exemplar with the Merfolk Mistbinder, but it all doesn't matter now because Merfolk Trickster is going to come in and tap down that Heart of Quran. And so that's a pretty good tempo play there from Nick for that turn. But again, five mana up, two cards in hand, nothing doing. The trickster gets in. Uh, now, this is kind of annoying. I was going to say, we can't see the power of these creatures. It was a 3-3. Three, three. I don't think he knows that the knight has first strike. Essence scatter on the knight. So he's down to one card in hand. But the black-white deck getting it done on only two mana. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Kapala means that he can't actually target anything here. Uh, unless he pays an extra two, which means seal away is shut off because 
um, he doesn't have access to four mana and he's miles away from that settled wreckage so this could be going to game three now I believe that's three that deep root I think is a four four so that's going to get in now he could actually s oh no the, the, the knight's got the merfolk misbinder checked so he was offering a trade there this is going to be interesting. He's going to dump to um, Authority of the Consoles, I suspect. So he's going to start gaining life back. You can see Nick's out of cards. No cards in hand. Playing off the top of his deck now. I'd be tempted to swing that Knight of Malice right here, see if he's interested in a trade. He's not going to though, just going to keep chipping away with the 4. The Deep Road Elite's just chipping back with 4, but the advantage here is that he has those 2 Authority of the Console, so any creatures that come down are going to put him ahead in the, in the race. Here's a Jungle Born Pioneer. Comes in tapped, gets him 2 life. I think this has put a Oh, it brings along a 1-1 one, one with it. You can see this would probably be pretty nice if there was a Metallic Mimic out in play. There is that mere folk that makes creatures with uh, counters unblockable. That would be an instant win here, right here. But you look at Paul up to 16 life. As all the knuckleheads get in. Again, he's offering that trade. The Heart of Quran for the Kapala. So he's going to have to cycle cast out looking, I suspect, to try and find that third land. The match isn't going to go long enough to be able to play it. Three Gideons in hand. He's going to crew and put him down to four. So he needs to... I believe he's just dead on board, actually. He can pump Hardship Oasis on something, swing the team, and we're going to go to game three. So uh, Paul there stumbling, only getting two lands and Nick manages to go wider and claim the win. So we're going to game three for standard. A strong performance from Nick in this series would put him right up with the leaders on 24 points. But that Heart of Quran is going to be able to get in here. <sighs> well, I'm a bit surprised he didn't attack. He, uh, holding it back on defense. So he's going to, rather than get in with a 4-4, four four, he's going to defend with a, a defender 2-2. Two two. Doesn't really make sense. There's that Kapala again. Now that this attack makes even less sense. It is a trade for the Toolcraft. So this time I think he fires up the Toolcraft. And again stuck on two lands. There's the first green source for Nick. I don't think he really cares about a 2-2 two -two getting in. So he still can't find that third land. 
But Heart of Quran has just been a card that Nick has just been unable to deal with. It's all three games now we've seen this thing just get in and do an absolute ton of damage. But you can see Nick down to 12 now as more authority of the consoles come in. I'm sure there's a there's a green card a number of green cards uh, that, that can deal with an artifact. There's a new one that's quite popular for two mana to destroy artifact and play a land out of your hand. Because this heart of Quran has just been an absolute beating in this matchup. He's got seven cards in hand, four mana available. Surely he's got something to do here. The Lord, three mana Lord would be a good one to be able to enable him to start drawing more. But this is just, th these authorities are just making us super painful. You can see it's a two turn clock, he's at eight life, so he's not realistic, Nick's not realistically going to be winning any damage races here. If he needs to, um, he needs to find artifact removal or he's dead. Especially while Paul is just continually missing that third land drop. If Paul hits that third land drop, I think it's going to be very tough anyway. I think there was a misplay there. He didn't crew properly. That's a problem with uh, Heart of Quran. Not Heart of Quran, but it's a problem with the sequencing of X-Mage. So you can see, uh, this is actually discussed offline, uh, th these two... Nick Peterson and Paul. Uh, so you can see here, we're going to pass the turn. I'll explain this in just a moment. But that that was a particular point. He tried to crew the Heart of Quran, but the sequencing was off. Uh, that's an X Mage error. That's not a plain error. There was a douche at the Pro Tour that enforced that. Uh, on his opponent and it just sucks like I'd kick that guy out the group literally if he was in our group um, and you can, so you can see here Paul goes to one so he should be at zero he had no answer to the heart of Quran no sorry Nick goes to one and so Nick even though he's going to swing for 10 damage I believe here in retrospect he uh, conceded the match so Paul actually takes this match to two games to one so that, that that's a um, that is a very good uh, sportsman like gesture from Nick that we like to see in this group so they're just going to play this out but you know there's a swing of 10 or whatever it is coming here but uh, Nick is actually dead so Paul takes it two games to one even though that says Nick takes the match and so we go to modern and here is Paul's pet deck. He plays this every single week. Um, this is his taking turns deck. As you can see, uh, Evan Bellow, Elmer Boy 04, has just jumped in to watch because if you listen to our podcast, I think it was week three, I had Evan on the show. And him and Paul are actually doing a Nerd Rage Gaming team event. And Paul is going to be playing this deck at that team event. So it'll be interesting. Um, but we're hoping to get both um, both Paul and Evan back on after the, the event to find out how they went. I have covered quite a bit of Paul's um, games. And he ha hasn't been having a lot of success with this deck the last couple of weeks. See Noble Hierarch... Uh, turn one that could be a lot of things from Nick Howling Mine I think he wants 
this is one of his key cards of the Dictator Crufix. But he's going to put it on the bottom. I'm a bit surprised by that. So this is the turn where we find out what Nick's on. Because normally these um, Hierarch decks do something turn 3. Knight of the Reliquary, a Land Destruction, an Ink Moth Nexus. Okay, we haven't seen this guy for a long time in this league. And this is, in fact, I believe... I believe this is the first time I've actually covered Infect. So this is going to be really interesting. So th the weakness of uh, Paul's taking turns deck is actually... Um, aggressive decks. And... And these um, Infect decks are twice as aggressive because they've only got to put in 10 points of damage, not... Um, not 20 and you can see that blighted agent is lethal right there but Paul can actually tap it down with the Geiger Drows so he was he was just dead at that particular point the problem now for Nick is that he he only has one card in hand he went for the win there and it didn't come off so Paul can I guess exhaustion here Oh, he's not going to. I, do, I don't believe that um, Infect Deck can do 10 damage with one card in hand, so there is a possibility to win with uh, two cards in hand. But this is going to push two, so two is not 10. So he's going to be able to, well here's a Glistener Elf, so you can see he's still got to push through 8 more points of damage. Of is going to enable him to draw extra cards. No sorry, uh, Dictator of Crufix, not Corsair of Crufix. Uh, this is an awkward one because Exhaustion is not fantastic here, you can see he's only got a Noble Hierarch and a Blighted Agent, so Exhaustion is only going to stop the Blighted Agent. It's not going to tap down anything else. So the damage can still get done by the Glistener Elf because the Glistener Elf is going to tap for at least uh, is going to come in for two points of damage if he's on the Noble Hierarch, Exalted Trigger, but he can also fire up that Ink Moth Nexus and get in as well. I, th I think I would have gone for to Fairy there. I think we're certainly going to see the Glistener Elf come in now three cards in hand for Nick so he won't be minding those extra card draws he doesn't have enough for a become immense uh, he does have enough for might of, might of old crozier but that's not going to be enough to get the job done the other, the other important thing here you can see with Nick's um, in fact is a ground swell okay that's going to pump it uh, he doesn't have a blue source at the moment so five that's seven so uh he's got lethal on board next turn so uh paul has got to win this turn he does have a geiger dress that's going to buy him a turn he's got to tap down the the, oh, the, the ink moth nexus oh I'd, okay two are going to untap he's got to tap the blighted agent the glistener elf and the ink moth nexus here he's going to plus to ferried draws another land uh, did he just he just tapped wrong so how do you undo this I, I don't think there's a way to undo this uh, he, he's gonna be dead if he can't undo it okay I don't know how he did it but he managed to undo it did he no he didn't okay so the problem there was Teferi said which two lands do you want to untap on your end step and he selected one that was already untapped that's an X-Mage error, by the way, so that can be reversed. Uh, but he's going to concede there, so that, that's a big blow. That hand is not keepable. You can see the Supreme Verdicts have probably come in from the sideboard. 
Yeah, I, I'm going to have to put that question to the group because uh, I, I have seen it come up more than one time when you tap a land for mana and then you change your mind you want to tap something else how do you untap that land I'm not really sure of the answer to that myself so we'll find out he's pretty safe there because um, noble hierarch is not a threat you don't really care about your life total against infect uh, and he, he is pretty well positioned here because you can see the Glistener Elf is going to come down. He's got that Blessed Alliance. It's going to get the, the Glistener Elf next turn. Because of the two Noble Hierarch triggers, he's definitely swinging that Elf by itself. What I would be tempted to do here if I was Paul is to take the first hit. Because um, I think he will go for a pump spell. He's a... Oh, actually, this is risky now. You've got three Noble Hierarchs. So that would be at least a 4-4 four four coming through. So you can see... Um, I, I, what's he doing? He's going for the... <laughs> he's going for a blossoming defense. So he's going for the win right now. So this is going to be just nice for... Just nice for Paul. So a super aggressive play. You can see there Nick went for both the blossoming defense and the ground swell. It would have been a turn 3 kill. But Blessed Alliance keeps him in the match. Blessed Alliance is an interesting one. It's, it comes and goes from modern. Uh, it's it's a very hard card for Infect to beat. Though Infect will probably bring in Spell Pierce from the sideboard. Um, but it, it's coming back into vogue in modern again because of Boggles. It's a very good card against Boggles. But um, Paul here has conceded no lands, so we're going to go to Legacy. And we've seen this deck quite a few times from him in Legacy as well. Uh, I, I sometimes put up the pictures, but I think we've shown it so many times, those that watch should know it by now. He plays something like that Phyrexian Dreadnought, and then uh, stifles the trigger, so he gets a 12-12 on turn 2. Okay, in this case he's going to get a 12-12 on turn 1. So he plays the Dreadnought. Trigger on the stack, which is a sacrifice 12 power of creature. Stifle that uh, trigger, and now he's got a 12-12 after turn 1. That's how the deck's meant to play out. So here we go. What's Nick? Nick's on, I suspect, something very near and dear to my heart. Black Red Reanimator. Let's see how Reanimator goes against a 12-12. He's going to be looking for a Tide Spout Tyrant here. Finds Gristlebrand, that's the first step. You can see he's down to two cards. Oh, he just conceded. I don't think he needed to concede in that particular point. Because he, he, Gristlebrand's got lifelink, he could have blocked. So Paul very quickly goes game up. And there's a Torpor Orb, that's the second part that he needs, but um, no turn one plays this time. Nick on the other side, looks like he does, he's got a Faithless Looting. He discards Grizzlebrand in an Unmask, plays a Chrome Mox. Exiling in Tomb. And he's going to exhume the Grizzlebrand. So turn one Grizzlebrand. But, so we saw in game one Paul got the draw he wanted. Game two it's next turn to get the draw he wants. Turn one Grizzlebrand. So Grizzles, this is a three turn clock right here. I'm surprised he passed that turn without drawing cards from Grizzlebrand. Here's a Dreadnought, stifle the thing. So he, he, he could have found a, a Thought Seize or an Unmask to get that card out of his hand. He is going to win a damage race though against that Dreadnought. 
Did he not attack then? Okay, so he's going to entomb a Tide Spout Tyrant, so that's going to be the win if he can bring the Tide Spout back. With the Grizzlebrand to draw seven cards, surely he can get the, the cards. I'd be curious to see what Paul actually brought in from the sideboard to deal with this. Uh, yeah, Paul's seen enough. Tide Spout Tyrant, he can't beat that. And game three. Again, again we can see no graveyard hate here from Paul, so he is on the play. Two Chancellors. I think this could be game over already. His first play is going to go down. Inquisition, I think. Or oh, Thought Seize. Yep, fire off the Thought Seize. Get countered. And now cross your fingers and hope that the reanimator play doesn't have a turn one reanimation spell. So this is unmasked, just checking that the coast is clear. Getting rid of Grizzlebrand, that's a pretty ominous sign. Oh, he's, actually, he's unmasking himself. Chancellor of the Annex of Blazing Archon. I, I think Blazing Archon here so that he can't attack. Yep, Blazing Archon goes. And unless Paul has a removal spell for the Blazing Archon, this game is also over. Of course, Blazing Archon means creatures cannot attack you. Here's a Dark Confidant. So he's got four turns to find an answer. Dark Confidant's going to let him draw two cards. Pithy Needle for Grizzlebrand. Let's see what's going on. Four cards in hand. Takes the Exhume. But this does not look good. I think we're going to see a concession pretty soon. So he's going to reanimate a Blazing Archon, and that's going to cost... Uh, reanimate, sorry, Chancellor, which means it's going to cost one more, so he's got Lethal on board next turn. Paul will just have a quick look at what cards he draws. They don't help him at all, so that's game.